Good afternoon, dear colleagues, uh, dear moderators. Uh, for today's section, I would like uh, to thank you first and foremost for uh, inviting me to participate in this forum called White Nights. And my presentation is uh, from Sverdlovsk Regional um, Oncological Center. I am Andrei Tarkanov. My topic is uh, uh, pre-operative embolization um, prior to surgery of spine tumors. Everyone knows uh, that uh, skeleton comes number three for metastatic localization. Uh, the medium for survivability, uh, even in um, advanced uh, stages, can be up to 30, uh, 48 months. And uh, uh, and pre-operative uh, treatment uh, is uh, uh, the best way forward. Spinal tumors uh, may Result, uh, resolve in having uh, pain syndrome and instability and neurological deficit. Spondylectomy uh, with uh, uh, single fixation is uh, the elective surgery when there are singular tumors uh, of spine. But the key challenge uh, is that intraoperative uh, blood loss is so pronounced and huge that surgery becomes uh, uh, impossible because uh, uh, there are huge risks uh, for patients' life. Um, so embolization, the first time, was uh, performed uh, quite time ago um, in 1974 by Benanti, Dr. Benanti. And today it is done uh, to achieve a possible blood loss uh, limitation and um, adequate interoperative uh, imaging and uh, helping to um, remove um, tumor and uh, reduce mortality. Um, what are the indications uh, in our center? They are, as you see, uh, are um, we have the two-stage uh, orthopedic and spinal interventions. Um, when patients have the uh, hypervascularized uh, uh, tumors uh, with a paravertebral component, if uh, um, a surgical intervention is planned for the patients uh, with the risk of high blood loss, uh, when we plan uh, for radical extirpation of tumor, and when there are uh, counterindications uh, for hemotransfusion, or when surgeons uh, forecast a high risk uh, for development uh, of uh, neurological deficit, uh, most often we say that neurological deficit, uh, uh, when we plan uh, at uh, the uh, next uh, level, uh, at the, the neck level, uh, and uh, at uh, medulla arteries providing um, blood circulation to uh, um, cere uh, cerebral uh, blood supply. Lytical tumors, uh, these are predictors uh, for hypervascularity, pathological fraction uh, and uh, uh, fast growth uh, of tumors. Intraoperational blood loss it correlates directly with the um, volume of operation. The bigger it is, uh, the bigger is expected blood loss. Intraoperative blood loss most often happens with metastasic uh, uh, renal cancer, hepatocellular uh, ca cancer in myeloma. Uh, especially if there is hypervascularized uh, soft tissue component. Uh, the average blood loss uh, at the radical, so to say, intervention is uh, up to um, uh, 3.5, 4.5 liters. Uh, and if we have metastatic uh, uh, kidney um, cell cancer, it may go up to, six, uh, up to eight uh, um, liters. According to our experience, um, Unfortunately, at present, uh, the evidence uh, is a law of high efficacy of this kind of embolization. Do we have only the one center retrospective um, uh, studies, and there are no big uh, randomized um, uh, studies? Uh, as of today, there was only one uh, big uh, randomized uh, study of Klaus. It was finished in the years 1516. But this uh, study had problems regarding randomization. As of today, it's very difficult to convince the neurosurgeon or orthopedic uh, um, uh, surgeon uh, to do the uh, radical uh, surgery without embolization. It's nearly impossible because the surgeon understands that uh, uh, then the uh, patient has a very severe, bloody, and very dangerous uh, uh, surgery. So with no comparison group, it's rather difficult to make big randomized studies. Um, uh, most um, hypervascular um, 
tumors are the uh, hepatocellular carcinomas, uh, thyroid, uh, neuroendocrine, uh, and primary uh, sarcoma of um, uh, the spine. Um, uh, melanoma, breast, and myeloma have interim assay uh, level of vascularization. And as for the lung and uh, colon, uh, uh, metastases uh, do not uh, usually need embolization unless uh, there are very big um, uh, foci. In some situations, uh, they may be regarded um, as well. At uh, the stage of diagnosis, um, uh, before the intervention, the task is to uh, visualize the functionally important arteries like Adam Kevich, Lazurta artery. We uh, uh, try to uh, see the non-vascularized uh, components of a uh, uh, tumor. We assist to plan the uh, surgery and to assess the pre-surgery embolization. In most cases, we assess the um, blood supply of uh, uh, the area, but also you should assess two levels up and down to see the lateral blood uh, uh, supply for remote anastomosis. Uh, it's not always that the occlusion of uh, feeding uh, vessels only at the level of um, a lesion uh, creates um, ischemization of uh, the tumor. Uh, the nearest levels may give more than half of a uh, blood supply of the vertebra with um, a lesion. Uh, the neighbor areas may be even more important of the tumor blood supply. Well, the angiography. Here the task uh, is to assess uh, the blood flow in the uh, zone of interest. Uh, during the uh, angiography, we also assess the organs uh, that have uh, the neighbor blood supply also on the level higher and lower. Here you can see the radicular medulla artery a branch, so one has to be very careful here. And uh, if the operator is not skilled enough, it's better to refuse this intervention. We do our best to do angiography in different projections. Uh, we do diagnosis with the uh, biggest uh, uh, field of view and frequency uh, so that to adequately assess all the collateral um, blood supply uh, sources. Intrasurgery is the same as intervention. We monitor the heart rate, we do the ECC, we monitor the blood pressure and uh, the patient's saturation. Best results are achieved uh, when using general anesthesia uh, that provides optimal visualization and best uh, control, pain killing and immobilization of the patient because uh, uh, sometimes the procedure may last uh, several hours, like two or three and it's very difficult to make the patient lie for such a long period of time. Um, it's next to impossible. You have to uh, remember to um, about the uh, case um, history. Quite often due to pain, patients aren't able to lie on the back um, in the spinal position for a long period of time. So the task uh, is to bring down the uh, blood uh, loss, to improve uh, the reactability of uh, the uh, tumor, to improve the blastics and antiblastics, and also transition of non-resectable tumors into resectable one. Principles of embolization are typical for all the classical types of embolization of tumors, the embolization of all the feeding um, vessels, uh, devascularization of the tumor stroma, and to the switching off of the uh, segment artery. But that depends on the need of the surgeon. We do our best to do all our, all our um, embolization with uh, the help of microcatheter to um, not let spasms take place. And uh, we do our best to prevent the non-target embolization. And uh, we uh, try to repeat uh, the diagnostic angiography up to embolization. The tools we use are according to the anatomy of the zone of lesion. Microcatheter is used for prevention of uh, spasms of non-target emboli. And uh, uh, we um, think about the blood uh, supply of anatomically uh, significant uh, uh, vessels. It depends on the number of uh, uh, vessels uh, and planned uh, uh, treatment. We can use the uh, particular and uh, 
um, also liquid agents uh, most uh, often fill and onyx. Spirals and plugs are more topical for occlusion of um, main arteries, say, in the neck. Uh, then we need to switch off and devascularize, say, the uh, spine artery. Uh, when uh, the tumor surrounds it. Um, uh, that's an example, a male 62 metastasis uh, of a prostate, uh, 11th uh, vertebra, uh, chest vertebra, uh, intercostal artery, spondylectomy, a pre-surgery embolization uh, was done with microcatheter and microprobe and uh, onyx 34 and particles of 500, 700 micrometers. You see, the medulla artery was used with uh, particles, was done with particles, uh, and with uh, uh, no, uh, in places with no blood supply, we use microparticles. Uh, on uh, radicular medulla artery, we used uh, the polymer agent. Uh, blood loss was about 200 milliliters. Uh, the only point on the uh, segment artery from where the radicular medulla artery started, we were very careful when working there and did uh, the embolization using backdoor indoor embolization. We first close to the proximal uh, branch, uh, not uh, uh, letting the non-target emboli take place, and then again very carefully uh, with a uh, high viscosity polymer we've closed uh, this uh, vessel. Thus we uh, switched off um, the intercostal segmentary artery from the blood uh, supply. The only point uh, when doing this um, embolization, you uh, should um, uh, make sure that there's a collateral uh, blood supply, higher or lower, uh, for the uh, spine. Not to uh, switch the um, only blood supply of the spine cord. Another uh, female, 56, with a paragon glioma. Uh, the uh, sources were segmental arteries at uh, level 32, as well as the sacral artery. On the uh, level of um, a lumbar a vertebra uh, with a catheter, we saw the venous stenta. Uh, it's a uh, high uh, speed um, uh, contrast, uh, move, uh, move of contrast uh, to the venous system. So we use the polymer to close the distal uh, uh, flow. We've closed the stanza. After that, we've added the microparticles and did embolization of uh, the uh, segmentary artery on both uh, uh, sides. So the first stage was closing the uh, stunt and the flow, and then the main uh, flow at the level of um, uh, sacrum embolization was more difficult. We started with embolization of, uh, with particular agent. After partial devascularization of the tumor stoma, we saw the opening of the left and right arterial stunt. We understood that particles may pass through and cause the uncontrolled ischemia with contralateral, from contralateral side. So we've closed the anastomosis with the polymer, and later embolization was added with um, uh, microparticles. Blood loss uh, was uh, a bit over one a liter, which is a very good result in such a case. Um, a bit about our experience. Um, uh, for the last time, we've analyzed our experience in the year 18, uh, where at that time we had um, no doubts regarding the method efficacy. We've studied 115 uh, patients. Now our group is over 160 patients. I believe we'll soon analyze a bigger group. In 50 cases, the main embolizing agent was a polymer. This uh, comparison of our work and the work of the other groups uh, presented in literature. Uh, so says the blood loss after embolization in patients was around 670 milliliters, which is much lower uh, than what's uh, described in literature there. Uh, the average uh, blood loss is much higher. There is um, no, no difference. Um, liquid uh, embolizer. Uh, you can control, uh, but uh, there was a negative moment, a long and a difficult uh, learning curve. That was a negative uh, part. Uh, the difference of uh, blood loss uh, 
in a patient with a first stage embolization and second uh, surgery? Well, it depended on the volume of uh, uh, surgery intervention. A less invasive uh, surgery, of course, caused much lower blood loss than uh, the big radical uh, surgeries. But even in the group of patients with spondylectomy, the blood loss didn't exceed one liter. A bit about complications. Post-embolization syndrome was um, in 54 patients, that's half the patients roughly, that is pain, fever, um, hypertension, arterial hypertension. Sometimes there were neurological lesions, uh, but they uh, disappeared uh, in, with conservative treatment. Uh, one patient had the stroke of um, a spinal cord, same patient died due to post-embolization edema. Well, thus we can uh, say that intra-surgery uh, blood loss uh, are diminishing. Uh, the result is better in complete embolization. Surgery should be done as quickly as possible. And big blood loss may be uh, due to non-verified uh, sources of uh, blood supply or the wrong surgical uh, tactics or strategy. It's not always that um, no effect of embolization is uh, due to the very uh, procedure. And uh, adequately chosen tools uh, shall improve uh, the uh, results. Uh, thus, uh, the angiography before the intervention shall bring down the blood loss and the number of complications, including the neurologic ones. It's rather an efficient and safe method, uh, and uh, the adverse events do not exceed 3%. A liquid age provide better control of an embolization. Thanks a lot for the attention.